Nick Powell is a depressed wealthy high school senior whose widowed mother, Diane's life, is frustratingly unwilling to align itself precisely according to the very carefully designed plan that he wants. Nick plans to skip his graduation and fly to London for a writing program. A few years prior, Nick's father died unexpectedly and the two have maintained a strained relationship in silence. We see Diane is making a toast to her son Nick at a large gathering. She gives him an inscribed gift. Nick proceeds to go to the food table and cut the center out of a chocolate cake, taking his piece with him in his bare hands as he heads to the garage. There, he sits beside a workbench and unexpectedly pulls out a shotgun, pointing it at his face. Suddenly, Nick jolts awake in bed, drenched in sweat. It was all just a nightmare. His mother has made breakfast, two eggs and bacon arranged in the shape of a smiley face. As she scans the newspaper, Nick asks if she's considered the writing program in London. She dismissively replies that she doesn't need to think about it. Nick already knows her stance. After breakfast, Nick rides his bike to school. At school, Nick hands a completed French essay to a classmate, who shows little interest in its content. Moments later, a girl named Susie approaches him and asks if he's going to Ava's party. Nick declines, explaining that he has other plans. Meanwhile, in the school bathroom, a group of bullies corner Pete Egan, another student. The gang leader accuses Pete of taking merchandise without paying for them. She threatens to cut off his finger unless he pays back what he owes. The bullies then leave. In class, a student reads a poem, and after he finishes, the teacher asks Nick to recite his own. Nick begins, captivating the class, but before he can finish, the bell rings and everyone leaves. During lunch, Nick talks to Pete and learns about his troubles with Annie's gang. Nick approaches the group and pays off Pete's debt. He asks Annie if it's enough, and she tells him to leave. As he walks away, he leans in and whispers in her ear, You're so broken. Annie snaps and attacks him, causing a scene in the cafeteria. Both are sent to the principal's office. When asked what happened, Nick jokingly says that Annie finds him attractive. The principal sends Annie home and advises Nick to avoid people like her. Annie returns to her apartment, where she immediately scolds her stepmother for not feeding her younger brother, Victor. Her stepmother complains to Annie's father about the way Annie speaks to her, but he sides with his daughter, sparking an argument. Annie retreats to her room, ensuring Victor is fed, before putting on headphones to drown out the fight in the living room. Later that night, Nick meets up with Pete, who asks if he'll attend Ava's party. Nick declines, handing Pete a book with a hidden airline ticket inside. He explains his plan to attend a writing program in London, expressing that since his father's death, his mother's overbearing nature has been suffocating. Meanwhile, Marcus Boehm, Annie's boyfriend, takes her on a crime spree. After breaking into a car, Marcus notices Annie eyeing a jewelry store. He warns her not to even think about it, but she impulsively smashes the store window and steals jewelry. They flee in the stolen car as police start searching for them. The next morning, Marcus and Annie argue over the stolen goods. Marcus insists she leaves the bag behind, but Annie takes it all with her. Furious, Marcus calls the police, tipping them off about Annie's theft at school. Later that day, Pete watches Annie from a distance as police search her locker and find the stolen jewelry. Annie calls Marcus, telling him she's been arrested and suspects who set her up. She vows to deal with it. Nick and Pete ride their bikes home, talking about Nick's upcoming trip. Pete mentions wanting to go to London and become a cricket star, but Nick playfully reminds him he lacks both a passport and the money for a ticket. They say their goodbyes, and Nick heads home, where his mother waits on the couch, visibly upset. She tells him the airline called to inform him his flight has been rescheduled. Nick tries to explain, but his mother coldly says it feels like she's living with a stranger. That night, Annie and her gang corner Pete, forcing him to admit he's the one who betrayed her. Terrified, Pete shifts the blame onto Nick, assuming he's already en route to London. Meanwhile, Nick attends Ava's party, flirting with Susie. He tells her about his trip, revealing his flight leaves in two hours. As they start kissing, Susie notices a new watch in his pocket. When she asks why he's not wearing it, Nick explains he prefers the watch his father gave him. He then leaves the party and begins walking home, unaware that an old suspicious car is following him. As he tries to run, Annie and her gang catch up, brutally attacking him while Pete watches, crying from the car. Despite Pete's pleas for them to stop, Annie taunts Nick, asking, who's broken now? Nick, barely conscious, replies, you are. Furious, Annie kicks Nick in the face, causing his head to slam against a rock. When the gang checks to see if he's still breathing, they panic. 
believing he's dead. Overcome with fear and confusion, they're unsure of what to do next. Annie takes charge, instructing them to carry Nick's body and dump it somewhere else. As they carry him, Nick's watch slips from his wrist and falls to the ground. They open a storm drain and drop his body inside before fleeing the scene. Shortly afterward, Annie arrives at Marcus's door. When he answers, she immediately confesses that she killed the person who betrayed her. Marcus, wary of being involved, tries to send her away, reminding her he's on probation. Unfazed, Annie insists he provide her with an alibi. She smears her bloody palm over his stolen goods before leaving. Annie then heads to the riverbank, where she burns her clothes to destroy the evidence. The next morning, Nick stumbles out of the bushes and onto the road, seemingly unharmed. When he arrives at school and interacts with others, he soon realizes that no one can see or hear him. He tries causing a scene to get their attention, but to no avail. As Nick roams the school halls, he overhears his mother on the phone in the principal's office, desperately asking for any information about her missing son. Leaving the school, Nick is struck by both a car and a truck, but nothing happens to him. Meanwhile, the authorities begin investigating his disappearance, officially declaring him a missing person. As Nick continues to walk around town, unseen and unheard, he even tries to communicate with his mother, telling her he's dead, but she remains oblivious. Detectives Kate Tunney and Brian Larson visit the Powell household to question Nick's mother. Shortly after, they discover tire tracks near the woods and find a piece of a car on the ground. Learning about the fight between Annie and Nick, the detectives decide to confront Annie. They find her sitting on the roof of a building and question her about Nick's whereabouts. She denies involvement, but the detectives tell her to reach out if she remembers anything useful. Back at the Powell home, Diane is reading Nick's poetry journal in his room when a bird suddenly flies into the glass window and is badly injured. As Nick watches the bird struggle, he suddenly notices a live bird sitting on his shoulder. When he reaches out to hold it, the bird vanishes in his grasp as it dies. This strange moment leads Nick to the realization that he must still be alive. Meanwhile, a search party is organized to look for Nick in the woods. He attempts to help by guiding the search dogs, but they remain oblivious to his presence. As the search intensifies, Pete feels the pressure to reveal the truth, but is threatened by Annie's gang to keep quiet. Later, Detective Larson visits Marcus in his garage to question him about the jewelry store robbery, but Marcus denies knowing anything. When Larson brings up Nick's case, Marcus again claims ignorance. Not long after, Marcus confronts Pete, holding him at gunpoint and warning him that the cops are tailing him. They return to the spot in the woods where Nick's body was dumped, and Pete shows Marcus where to find it. The next day, Marcus gathers Annie's gang and convinces them to turn on her, setting her up for an ambush. Sensing a trap, Annie calls Pete and tells him to meet her at the rendezvous, allowing her to observe the situation from a distance. But Marcus finds Annie first, holding her at gunpoint in front of the gang. He orders Pete to leave. In a moment of defiance, Annie presses the gun to her own torso and dares Marcus to pull the trigger. Suddenly, one of the boys shouts, Cop! Distracted, Annie grabs the gun and runs, despite police orders to stop. After a brief chase, she manages to escape by climbing to safety. As Nick yells that they'll catch her, she shouts back, Never! To his surprise, Annie actually hears him. That night, Annie sneaks into the school gym, where Nick is also present in spirit. The next morning, she visits Nick's house and sifts through his belongings. As she pours ashes into her hand from a small container, Diane enters the room, startling Annie, who quickly flees. Annie rushes back to the woods, where she last saw Nick, only to discover that his body has been moved. She spots a nicotine gum pack and realizes Pete must be involved. Confronting Pete, she learns that neither Nick nor Pete turned her in. Desperate, she demands to know who moved Nick's body. When Pete finally confesses, Annie tracks down Marcus and drags him to the edge of a cliff, holding a pistol to his head and forcing him to reveal Nick's whereabouts. As she turns to leave and find Nick, Marcus pulls out a gun and shoots her. Annie fires back, hitting Marcus as she falls to the ground, badly wounded. In her weakened state, Annie calls Detective Larson and tells him she knows where Nick can be found. Elsewhere, Pete attempts to overdose on pills, and as he slowly dies, Nick finds Pete's spirit standing beside him. Fortunately, Pete's father comes in before he dies, saving him before it's too late. Eventually, the police locate Nick among the rocks and rush him to the hospital, barely alive. Annie fights to get to him, despite the gunshot to her abdomen. As her condition worsens, she begins to hear Nick's voice more clearly. 
His spirit guides her through the hospital corridors, helping her avoid the police. When Diane sees her, she's tempted to alert the authorities, but Annie shares intimate details only Nick would know, thus gaining Diane's trust. Diane allows Annie to enter Nick's room. In Nick's room, Annie lies beside him, and they share a brief conversation as his spirit moves back to his body. Moments later, Annie succumbs to her wounds and passes away. Some time passes, and we see Annie's younger brother, Victor, playing with a remote-controlled airplane over a river. Nick notices Victor, and is concerned that the boy is alone. Victor confides that he was supposed to be there with his sister, but she's gone. They both commemorate Annie by writing her a message on top of the plane that reads, Hey Annie, and flying it across the riverbank. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.